Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. For this video, we will be going through a contents review of the Gaplant TR5 Hurairu from Advance of Zeta, released by Bandai in a very old 2006 period. Not a recent kit at all. Um, so this is actually all part of uh, something I've seen on Instagram recently and it looks like there's actually a few people participating uh, for this particular I dare say community type event for the month of April. So in a similar thought process with my Armored Core April for this particular theme on the Gundam side of things is um, Advance of Zeta April. So the intent is to build any kits, most of which are P Bandai, uh, but there were still some retail kits uh, from the Advance of Zeta period storyline. I will admit I'm not too familiar with Advance of Zeta, but the general rationale is pick a suit or two or three, however many, and build to your heart's content as long as they fit the theme of Advance of Zeta April. So for my particular hand in this community event, I I thought I had a few more options, but apparently I don't because some of the pre-orders I made whilst the kit has been paid for, which is good, because shipping is still inconsistent out of Japan. I think I've got about two, maybe even three advanced kits still in Japan uh, that I'd like to ship over, but I don't necessarily want to go through ferry. But surface mail is contentious at best. So with that being said I had um, I think I had two Hazen Salis or however it's pronounced available but they Zeta kits from this line are very they're an acquired taste but still they're a very nice acquired taste but I thought no for their sizing I'd give them a miss because they are fairly large kits and I'd already committed to doing armored core kits for the month. So I had the Wound Wart, the Hararu and the original Gaplant, which I think within half an hour 45 minutes I disregarded um, because it's it does show up I believe from what I was reading online in Advance of Zeta. Um, but its initial premise is back in Mobile Suit Zeta, so I thought I'll skip that one. And between the Hararu and the Wound Wart, I thought I'll stick with the Hararu. I do like the look, and yeah, this is how it came into being. So, contents review, because the box has been long flat packed, and I'm not going to try and find it. Um, but obviously since I hadn't built the kit, everything else is still intact on the runners. So without further ado, let's look at the Hararu. And once again, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that. I did actually have a look and people do have different ways of pronouncing it. Um, there was even a period of time I thought the H was silent because why not? But here we are. So here's the instruction booklets. Um, yes, it's a little bit bent because it's been in the bag with the runners and it did inflate a bit. So a picture of the finished Hararu. I'm sure there's been some additional work done, but that's okay. As I said, back in 2006, so that is... Oh, 15 years, I should know this, because 2006 was an interesting year for me. It was a good year, but interesting. 
um, 15 years. So it's not a recent kit at all. Um, good thing about these old Universal Century style high grades is gave you some statistics on the machine, um, which I'll just leave there. I won't read them out. Have a quick look on the back. So some nice pictures of the completed suit. Um, I feel I know the name of this one off the top of my head, but it's not coming to me, so I will refrain from trying to acknowledge it other than it is there. I think that actually was a normal retail release kit though. Um, some instructions on the marking seals as well as a picture of its uh, mobile armor mode. Color guide, fairly standard. Opening up, so don't know how much of this, most of it will be in view. So just a bit more information. Given that this is 15 years old, there is very little English translation. So this will be all in Japanese. Um, I'm going to assume, given that these will most likely be kit numbers, so high grade UC 56, 57 and 69, um, probably allow you to parts borrow by the looks of things. Um, did it actually mention which... So this is why I wish I actually had the box, because I always thought that so obviously the box would tell you what the uh, kit number was but I thought there was a way to tell in the instructions it has been a while since I've built a UC kit anyway let's try and get to the nitty gritty so I'm just going to try and actually do this in some form of chronological order knowing that this is actually a very painful um not painful review, but the instructions are flippy all over the place. I almost thought it'd be written here, but anyway, if I find it, I'm going to put it in the comments. That's what I'll do. So, standard image of your parts list, and then starting with the instructions, looks like there will be some level of uh, intricacy involved. So going back to these runners, there are a few X's. Now because this is still at the plant, I'm wondering if some of those are from the original that won't be used on this one. I guess we'll see later on. So that's steps 1 through to 13. There's 14 onwards, so you've got the torso. I can only imagine that this is both the front and rear skirting. Um, I assume the head. Not too sure. Looks like it. Yes, I see a, a beam fin in there. Um, arms, I would imagine. Um, do this. It does get a little bit um, tight for space. A few more steps, so legs, both legs. I would imagine these would be your binders, which do go on the arms. And then the weapons stand. It is very nice that a natural stand is included with this one, so you can actually make a nice um, display piece of this one without having to keep it on its two legs forevermore. Um, interesting, an additional mode for the rifle. And then going back over here, so I can only imagine these are the steps to switch it to its mobile armor. A little bits of parts forming. Some natural bits do look like they'll just freely move. The arms will be interesting, might even be easy to take those off. And finishing up here. So Actually, surprisingly, it doesn't parts form too much. Parts forms for some of these shoulder bits, but 
for the most part, it's it's definitely not the worst parts for me, I think. Okay, that's a look through the instructions. Now the fun bits. So there were two sets of well, two sets of stickers. You've got the normal foil stickers. Um, I'd imagine a lot of that is venting, camera lenses, and probably some color correction. But that's actually not too bad. So we have a close look. And then we have transfers. They do look very nice. I probably will not use them. I will see how things go. Actually, might even do. So that one's a very nice one though. That's um, Titan's test tip. So those were the stickers. So, going through all the runners, air runner, so predominantly that nice stock blue that we would have all been familiar with with the um, Gundam Mark II, uh, got some yellows, actually a nice golden yellow to be honest, and white, so just the three colours on this runner. The C runner. Um, once again, just in that uh, rich dark blue. And in fact, we are graced with two identical C runners. That also makes some noise if we move the plastic on top of each other, which I will stop doing. Um, I'll see if these come together. They're actually, oh, they will. So it's actually a D1 and a D2 plate, but it's probably because they've also broken them in half, or I might have actually broken them in half to uh, put them away. So that's D1. And then D2. Now, because this is a older kit, just looking at things like these, um, all joints and I'm going to assume these are probably the upper legs these are going to be the old style of ball and socket not necessarily um, using the joints via the polycap but we'll have a look at the polycap sheet in a bit the e-runner oh and by the way that um, D runner was in a white. E runner, so standard grey. So some manipulators here. And I'm sure these beefy blocks are probably for the legs. I guess we'll see. So that was E. We have the F runner which is purely for the stand. This is actually a very nice stand. Um, sadly, I can't read kanji, so I have no idea what this originally came with. Interestingly enough, this alone was from 2003, so the kit may be 2006, but looking at some of this stuff will be even earlier. Uh, it's probably safe to assume that some of these frames were from the original uh, plant. And that's in a black. We have a G runner. Going back to oddly enough a multicolor runners. Not very usual to see two multicolor runners, but here we are. Once again, I can't tell if this was from the original plant or not, but that's okay. So we've got golden yellow once again. That's, um, I've been calling it white, but it actually might even be a very light grey. Um, more of that dark blue. And up here we have some grey. 
a bit of a mixture of parts on this one as well. Here we have the H plate, once I put it right side up. So this is all in grey, much like the the E runner I believe. Can't remember now, even though I just did about 30 seconds ago. Some more manipulators there with a trigger finger actual. And to wrap things off, the PC runner. Definitely haven't seen one of these ones in a while. Um, looking at these parts here, so I would imagine A and B would probably be for legs and shoulders. Watch this point. Legs going to the waist and the shoulders going to the main torso. And then there are the various polar caps. So that pretty much brings us to the end of that. So good number of runners involved. Um, color separation doesn't seem too bad. I'm sure as I build it I will spot some more areas where there could be the potential for some color accuracy. Um, be interesting actually just looking at the front. There's some wiring that I wasn't really paying attention for. But I don't recall seeing that in the gold and yellow, but it could be there. As I said, I wasn't looking for it, but uh, we'll see how that goes. At least there wasn't any, well, no, there was some yellow stickers on the foil sticker sheet, but I'm hoping they're not for those. Um, hopefully I can start this soon. Trademark. Um, We'll see how things go. Got a few builds literally in parallel of all various shapes, sizes, and everything else. But I did want to get this review out um, just to kick things off and obviously just make it known that I am happy to participate for this particular event. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Feel free to leave a comment down below and a like if you enjoy today's content. Subscribe if you wish to follow my channel and stay up to date with upcoming releases. Extra content can also be found on my Instagram account and a link to that can be found in the description below. Once again, thank you for your support to help grow this channel. Please stay safe and take care and I will see you in the next video. Yeah.